What's up, guys? Welcome to another Adventures in Celluloid. I'm Lee. And this is Josh. And I'm Corey. And today we are talking about... <laughs> Santa Con- Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. Yep. <laughs> this is the Christmas special from us to you guys. This is our gift to you this Absolutely. Christmas. Um, so... It's Lee's first time just watching it, so it's... Yeah. <laughs> we'll get his opinions in a moment. Um, so I guess I'm... Walk us through this one, Josh. Switching it up a little bit today. I guess I'm, I'm walking through the plot instead of... Give it a stab. Nor- normally Corey, but yeah, I'm giving it a stab. S- since we just well, we just watched this movie. Like, we just finished it, like, five minutes ago. So we're gonna, uh, go through it. And, um, let me just say, this is, this is like a Christmas movie that is, it's... When, okay, when did it come out? We have to establish 1964. that. 1964. And it has a bunch of obscure actors you probably have never heard of, but... Um, Except for Pia Zadora. <laughs> Pia Zadora is probably the only one anyone's ever heard yeah, of. This yeah, this, this was the movie he played in that skyrocketed his... Well, not skyrocketed. <laughs> Pia Zadora is a girl. Or, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know who it was, okay? See, I, no, I, but it, 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 it launched their... It, it launched her, I guess... It, career as a actor so anyway well she's not this special though yeah she's not i have never heard of her until she won a golden globe and also a golden raspberry <laughs> Dude. So. those are two way different things and way different sizes but okay no but um this this movie can it like okay you go watch a wonderful life and it's like the perfect Christmas movie. It's like a tradition in my family. It, yeah. Like every Christmas Eve, we watch. I watch it's every a wonderful Christmas, Eve, life. Christmas Eve as well. Yeah, it's a. It's just you know, it's a perfect family friendly, great, nice, we'll, we'll perfect do that. movie. We we'll, might do that next next Christmas. Yeah, we'll do it next Christmas. Everybody knows what that's about, probably. But anyway, yeah. Back to Santa Claus <laughs> conquers the Martians. Um, <laughs> so, as you can probably tell from the title, this movie is about Santa Claus conquering the martians but Except but he doesn't really conquer he doesn't the really martians. conquer him he more prevails over their evil desires with love and peace and joy of the christmas season so, so that's what you want to call it <laughs> yeah with that laugh of his <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh oh, okay anyway um so yeah i'm reading off the wikipedia article again once again um uh the story involves the people of Mars, um, it says, including Momar, which is Mom Martian, and Kimar, which is King Martian, and they're, wor- <laughs> and they're worried that their children, Girmar, which is Girl Martian, and Bomar, which is bo- Boy Martian, so this, they're like, they've come up with the alien names, and they've just taken the first three letters, first two or three letters of the actual, like, Boy Martian. Yep. It's Bo-mar. It's... Yeah. Not too original, but you know, I mean, um, on internet movie database, this this movie got a two point five out of ten stars, and it's like, well, we watched it, and it's it's a public domain film. Yeah, it's in the public domain, so you can go on the internet archive and give it a download if you want to watch it. Yeah, so it's um, legal. So there you go. Basically, the plot of this movie is that the Mar- the Martian kids are not not too happy for some reason and they're watching you know earth tv and it, it's kind of weird it kind of doesn't make any sense and their helmets look hilarious that's a side note i want one <laughs> they probably sound in some thrift store they probably, they probably turn up in some they, thrift they probably store. trashed them after the movie no yeah probably so anyway um the martian children are watching too much earth tv so the king martian goes and consults chochem which is Yiddish for genius. <laughs> <laughs> and he sounds like that. He's, he's like a, he's like a, happy anymore. He's They're an ancient, 800-year-old Martian. Oh, and then they consult him and he's like, children need Santa Claus. Exactly. Santa Claus. And that's exactly how he talks. <laughs> and then he explodes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So he really it eight hundred years to tell them that, and then explodes. Um, <laughs> um, so basically, the next part of the movie is that the Martians go to Earth and they try to find Santa Claus. 
all they see is a bunch of people ringing bells next to the kettles <laughs> that you can... <laughs> Some of them are putting their whole body into it. <laughs> like, clang, 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 like, getting some hip action into the ring. And like, yeah. yeah, anyway, um, but yeah, so they, they go to Earth, and uh, they're walking through the woods, and there's these two kids named Billy and Betty. So uncommon. It's so uncommon. The names are so uncommon, you, didn't, you never even hear those. Yeah. Billy and Betty, and so... I actually don't know a Billy or a Betty. No, I don't either. <laughs> I know a Bill, but I mean, that, wait, I guess I well, do I mean, know a Betty. I guess, I mean, technically Billy would be just short for William. Because Bill... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I went to high school Bill with a Billy, so never Billy. mind. I, I, but I don't, it's, I don't yeah, talk to him. It's just short him. for William. Yeah. Billy Clinton. Oh, yeah. Billy Shakespeare. Billy Shakespeare. Billy Shakespeare. <laughs> Billy Shakespeare. <laughs> Billy Shakespeare. You done writing that play yet? <laughs> Romeo and Juliet by Will, by Billy Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Romeo, oh Romeo. Romeo, okay. Romeo. Where y'all at? <laughs> 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 okay, anyway. So they, they go in the woods and they find Billy and Betty. And Billy and Betty are like, what? You guys are Martians. And so. Exactly and, like. <laughs> exactly. And they're not, they're not like. You know, Betty's like, next time I, if I see you Martian, I'm going to scream. And then, like, the Martians walk up right then. She screams and she doesn't do anything else. She screams and then she's totally fine. Um, but <laughs> anyway, so um, the Martians are like, you know, tell us where Santa Claus is. Yeah, they're aiming guns at the kids. <laughs> yeah, they're aiming guns. It's like, oh, my gosh. Guns blazing. It's crazy. And then so the kids are like. No, no, those those people dressed up as Santa Claus ringing those bells. Those that's not Santa Claus. Santa Claus is in his workshop d- down at the North Pole with where the polar bears are. <laughs> and so they're like, "Great, now we know." But we can't let you guys talk to the authorities. So then they kidnap the children, and it's like, <laughs> "Okay, fine." So then they it's a family uh, film. Yeah, it's a family film where they kidnap children, and so then <laughs> so then they take them to their spaceship. And then they they fly to the North Pole, where they get attacked by a polar bear. That which is basically a guy in a polar bear <laughs> it suit. It is. It's my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> it is. A man in a polar bear it looks suit hilarious. attacking it's them. It's so hilarious. Anyway, um, after they're attacked by the polar bear and they all survive, obviously. The polar bear, quote unquote. The guy who plays the polar bear gets fired. No, <laughs> not really. But so then, um, uh, so then they find Santa Claus and they use they use their secret weapon, go- Torg. Torg? Yeah, Torg. Torg. It's a robot. I believe it. I believe that's um, it's a guy in a cardboard box. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I believe. This movie. I believe that the name is. I, I I think it's an intentional anagram of Gort from. Uh, and so with Gort is of course the robot in the classic 1951 film, The Day the Earth Stood Still. <laughs> Go back to space. <laughs> that's probably what it means. No, but um, yeah. <laughs> You gotta tell Gort Clatchy for out of Nick though. Clatchy for out of Nick though. Make, makes sense. <laughs> he goes, he, that, makes that's sense. that's what's in, that's the whole movie. It's Back like tell Gort tell Gort Clatchy for out of Nick though, and then she does, and then it gets back in the spaceship and leaves, and the whole world's saved. Like wow, three <laughs> words is great. You got this in the bag. But anyway, but yeah, they wanted to write off the success by just rearranging the letters and making it Torg. In yeah, Santa Claus conquers the kind of like a homage, kind of. Kind of, kind of. <laughs> but um. So then they, so then they send in Torg into the workshop, and all the elves are like, "Oh my gosh!" And then they grab sticks and stuff, and then the robots just walk in through tables, and then it stops in front of Santa, and Santa's like, "You're a toy." <laughs> Who are <laughs> you? <laughs> exactly. You're a toy. <laughs> exactly like that. You're the biggest toy I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe the Santa only says ho 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 like once in this whole movie. There's another character that says a lot more than he does, but we'll get to that. Yeah. But anyway, um, so then they they just capture Santa. Santa's like, you know, what the heck? Okay, I'll I'll let you kidnap me. <laughs> so then he, get, he gets them. They get in the ship. No, because they they, they, they use Mrs. Claus as leverage because they freeze Mrs. Claus. Yeah. So he's like, okay, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the reason why they kidnap. Santa Claus is because they they wanted to send they wanted Santa Claus for the Martian people too. So they were like, let's just steal the 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 Earth Santa Claus. Everything will be okay. Well, so, be like. Yeah. So then they 
they kidnap him and but then um you know Santa's like he makes everybody happy everybody he comes in contact with so except except this guy named Voldar or Vulgar or whatever his name is and he's um, just this he's like the Grinch except he doesn't get nicer as the movie goes on he just he's gets got, he's got quite a mustache he's yeah quite, he's got quite the impressive mustache <laughs> I don't yeah. even know if it's real because you can see it hanging off his face at some point he's like it's not stick to, sticking to his face it wouldn't, that, it wouldn't surprise me <laughs> yeah certainly so, uh, I mean like Volar is he's just he he's like you know what? Everything would be better if we just killed Santa or destroyed <laughs> Santa Claus. That's how they put it. They don't say kill in the movie because they want to be family friendly. But so at, at times he 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 attempts to put the 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 children in uh, uh, Santa Claus into an airlock and then um, lock him in there <laughs> <laughs> and pull the lever and then they. But but Billy but Billy figures it out that what the airlock's all about because he wants to be a spaceman someday. Yeah, and all of a sudden Billy knows all about like astrophysics and everything. <laughs> you know, he's like he's like eight. He, he's, ten. he's ten. He's ten. Yeah, he's ten. He's ten. And Betty's eight. eight. Yeah. So and then and then Voldar's evil character shows through and sta- and and uh, what's it, what's his name? Key Keymar or whatever. Yeah, something like that. King, yeah, King Mar- Mar- the King, the, the King Martian. King Mar- King Mar- <laughs> he comes in and he's like, "Who, who's in the airlock?" And what does he say, Lee? Nobody. <laughs> now, <laughs> it's like the evil, just epitome of evil. Like at that moment, anyway. But but then you know, Santa Claus, Billy, and Betty walk in. They're like, "Hey, what's up, guys?" And and then Bol- Bolar's like. What? Yeah. Why are you guys in here? Like, I, I just I tried to destroy you. My plan, it's failed. <laughs> Except it's more, more dark and his voice is lower than that. But, <laughs> no, but um, and then Kimar's like, well, you know what? Since uh, you just tried to destroy him, we're gonna hold you up or whatever. Am I am I going along with the plot? Well, here, yeah, I, I, think, I think. Am I following right. it? Okay, I feel like I'm skip something. You, you got Wikipedia there for guys. Oh yeah. I forgot about this Wikipedia article. So yeah, when they arrive on Mars, Santa and the children build a, fa- uh, build a factory and they make toys for the kids. And then Voldar sabotages the factory because um, he escaped. And yeah, they he landed. escapes. Yeah, he escapes after after they found out that he was this mastermind behind you know trying to lock them in the airlock and destroy them or whatever. Um, but he escapes and then his him and Stobo and Shim, which are his little assistants his little his little uh, his minions his minions um they they go and try to sabotage santa's fat santa's toy factory that's made on the spaceship it says uh, uh kimar kimar's uh meanwhile dropo 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 who and that's the funny one right the funny one <laughs> the funny yeah, though Dro- funny, quote unquote dropo is the funny martian and he's he's like he's like the first hand comedy of the whole of the whole movie. He just makes you laugh every time he's on screen. Whether it be from stupidity or just pure hil- hilarity. Yeah. But, plain, uh, he's just plain goofy is all. Yeah. You know, um, uh, uh, he ta- he's taken a great liking to Santa Claus and Christmas and he puts on one of the San- on one of Santa's <laughs> spare suits cuz he wants to be the sa- he wants to be Santa Claus. He wants to see what it's like. Uh, where are you gonna, where are you saying no, something? I'll get I'll get it after you're done. Okay. Um. So so then he starts acting like Santa Claus, and he goes to the toy factory to make more toys. Um. But it's sabotage, and then Voldar's in there with his minions, and then they kidnap him, thinking he's the real Santa Claus. So then they take him to this weird cave thing, and uh, and then um, they're like questioning him, like, "Who's your daddy, and what does he do?" <laughs> yeah, just like that, <laughs> just like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but um. So then, when Santa and the and the kids um, come back to the factory to, to make more toys, they discover that the that it's been sabotaged, and then they're like, "Well, oh, let's get one doll and one teddy bear," and then they click the buttons, and then it comes out, and then it's like a bear with a doll's head and a <laughs> teddy bear with a oh no, a, yeah, a teddy bear with a doll's head and a doll. So and creepy. Bear's head. It's it it looks weird, and they're like, "Okay, let's get a baseball bat," and it turns out to be some kind of tennis racket bas- baseball. That mix. <laughs> it's like what? What the heck a, is this? A baseball racket. I don't, I don't <laughs> think. I don't think the machine even made tennis rackets beforehand. So I don't know how that happened. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> it, it, they can do whatever they want. It didn't good. have a tennis racket slot though. They they click one button and then it just well, spawns. But I mean, to be fair, there was like fifty buttons and only four oh, yeah. or five slots on the machine. <laughs> yeah. 
So, so who knows? Yeah, so um, Voldar and Stobo, Stabo. I don't know. Uh, it's it's one of his minions. minion one. Yeah, <laughs> minion number one. Come back. They come Cholo back, number one. <laughs> yeah, they come, they get back to the factory and they make a, a deal with Kimar, which is like the main head Martian once again. Yeah, but but when, when they see the real Santa Claus, they realize that their plan has been foiled, and they're like, oh, oh, wait. Uh, we thought we had, the, we, had the, we had the real Santa Claus, but and instead they had Droppo, and um, <laughs> Droppo figures out how to escape, and he tricks Shim, which is minion number two, and he gets out of there, and um, uh, I have no idea how he tricked them. I didn't even understand that part. He like switched yeah. two light bulbs and distracted them or something. <laughs> I was like, what? I wish yeah. it was that easy in real life, but. If there even is a real life of Martian. <laughs> <laughs> but um, then Kimar arrests Voldar, Stobo, and Shim, Shim, or whatever how you say his name. And Santa uh, notices Droppo acts like him and says that Droppo would make it a, a great Martian Santa. So then Droppo becomes the next Santa Claus. Well, the Martian Or the Santa first, Claus. the first Martian Santa Claus. And after that, Santa and the kids are sent back to Earth, and. It's the end of a really interesting hour and 21 minute classic, <laughs> maybe not classic, no. Christmas film. It's classic for a different reason. <laughs> classic classic for being bad. Yeah. So that is basically the full plot right there. Yep. We spent 17 minutes talking yeah. about it. Okay, Lee, this is your first time seeing it. What are your impressions? Um, not... Good. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you seen it before, Josh? I've seen it once before this, and I remember I remember zilch about it, except the fact that it was just I was I just thought it was so corny. The think, whole thing is so corny. I think this was my third time seeing it. The first time was by myself. Second time was my older brother, and his comment right after was like, "That's an hour and twenty minutes of my life I can't get back." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, pretty much. That's... And yeah, it's it's often hailed as one of the worst. Movies ever made? Yeah, it, it's um under trivia, um uh, in Internet Movie Database. I was like looking at this stuff. It's interesting. Um, it, has, uh, it has been covered by MST3K. Yeah, uh, it says the film is listed among the 100 most amusingly bad movies ever made in Golden Raspberry Award founder yep. John Wilson's book, The Official Razzie Movie Guide. Yep. And did you know that they that there was a remake in development? I'm not sure if it would have made it any better or not. I'm I'm fundamentally against remakes. I'll discuss that at another time when we're talking about a movie that has been remade. But but I'm fundamentally against remakes. But I think this I don't know. But think of this: the only the only char- the only character that they had an actor considered for was Droppo. Guess guess who was in talks to play Droppo? This, this was back in 2000. He was mm-hmm. he's a big star at this time. Oh, back in two thousand. Um, yeah, he's a big star. He's he's been in Leonardo DiCaprio. No, he's he's, <laughs> he's played the lead in a Christmas movie that I Tim Allen. Oh, no. that, that, oh. I think we discussed it earlier. I mean, we talked. We 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 considered it earlier. I think Lee suggested it earlier. Oh, Jim Carrey. Yeah. Oh, really? Jim Carrey was in talks to play Droppo. I mean, that 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 would have been interesting. He might have actually been actually funny. Yeah. <laughs> I mean the, the the hilarity of Droppo is just how. Eh. Oh. If you want if you, if you want to know like Droppo's kind of mannerism, think of like Barney Fife mixed with Jim Carrey, like just that combination kind of. Mm, it's it's I wouldn't put Jim Carrey in the mix. Oh no, okay, not yeah. Jim Carrey's too too good for that. Uh, well, Barney's too good for that. Yeah, yeah he's he's his own beast. It, um, hey, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just tell them a quote from Droppo. Yeah, yeah. This is a rough quote. Yeah. It's, but, but rough like, quote. but like he finds, like Kimar finds him sleeping on the, on the living room floor. Somehow he didn't see him until he looked over him. But, but he gets him up and he's like, "You're sleeping," and then, um, Droppo's like, "Oh no, I, f- I'm, I wasn't sleeping. I forgot how. So I was just practicing." <laughs> Oh my goodness! Who writes this stuff? But of course, I think it. I think it was planned as a family movie, so that's obvious why some of the writing's horrid. <laughs> but let's see. Did you know that a Brazilian comedy comedy group 
called Hermes and Renato spoofed the film in their MTV program Tell a Class, redubbing it as Santa Claus and the Magic Powder, the magic powder being more loosely translated as angel dust. But in this version, Santa is a drug dealer. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. See, this, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite a movie. It's had a novelization that was released in, like, 2005, but it, it was very tongue-in-cheek. I, I, I want to check that out, kind of. Yeah. So should we move on to favorite part? The polar bear, man. The polar bear is my favorite. The part. polar bear. That, it just, it was funny. <laughs> Did you see this guy? Like, hey, um, they probably went to him during casting and they're like, hey, um, you look like you have the build of a polar bear. <laughs> no, you, no, no, he you... didn't. That, whoever <laughs> no. was in that suit was not built like a polar well, that's bear. Probably, that's, they probably told him he had, but, but they were joking. They just wanted him to be a polar bear. They were like, can you please, uh, you know, you, would you like to be a polar bear? We can dress you up in this cool suit. Just walk around on all fours for a, for a couple couple takes, and uh, <laughs> you can be a polar bear in our movie. And they forgot to mention that it was going to be one of the 50 worst films of <laughs> all time. So, that happened. How about you, Lee? What was your favorite part of the movie? Well, I mean, the polar bear suit was ridiculous, but honestly, I think my favorite part was when it ended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need to shake your hand, Lee. Yep. That, was, okay. that is that is a very <laughs> wise choice there. But, but what was your favorite? Was your favorite part the polar bear, Josh? Yeah, the fa- my favorite part was the polar bear. Oh my I just goodness, it was polar bear because it you know you know how you see polar bear in movies and then like. If the person's dressed up in a polar bear costume, like it, it looks like a polar bear. Like it looks okay, but this movie. <laughs> hey, um, Grandma, do you think you can um, embroider a, uh, a polar bear suit for me for this movie I'm making? <laughs> it, it, was, uh... <laughs> it, it was literally like a fur suit with a like a horrible looking bear head yeah. as a mask. <laughs> Pretty much, <laughs> and the dependence on stock footage. Like when they when the oh when America's oh, got the got the Air Force getting into gear, even though that never the Air Force that, the that storyline hangs in the air. Yeah, that the the, and, <laughs> uh, the the importance of the Air Force because I forgot to mention the whole Air Force thing. The importance of the Air Force, the, their objective was to go save the kids or Santa Claus or whatever. Yeah, the Martians gonna, were kidnapping them. So yeah, like, and this movie <laughs> uses like at least. Five minutes of stock footage from the Air Force. Like you can tell it's stock footage because it's not filmed the same as everything else. The picture quality looks a lot different, and it's 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 definitely not the filmmakers. There's a, stock I, footage I say, is good though. I would say there's at least eight to ten minutes of stock. Yeah, footage. yeah. Let's be fair. And they just keep reusing the same yeah. ones. Yeah, some of it's up up in the air, and those are the only scenes up in the air. So it's not. So I don't think they had the budget to get up there in the sky. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's definitely stock footage, but anyway, yeah. I, I've it's not it wouldn't be the first terrible terrible movie with stock footage. Yeah. Do we have anything else to say before we get on to the quality and? Hello. 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 Just plotting world domination. Don't bother us. Yep. <laughs> so um, on the content, do we have anything else to discuss before we get on to? Content and quality. I think we've I think we covered all bases. This is an hour and twenty minute movie. It's not Yeah. It doesn't it's not, have too much it's not, beef. It's not an epic. It doesn't have too much beef to it. It's like yeah. In fact it's it's just got a lot of How are we doing on time? mistletoe and stuff. Minutes. Not beef. Okay, sorry, that was horrible. A lot of fake snow. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of fake snow. <laughs> a lot of, like, yeah. A lot of oh yeah, that, that reminds me like the in the scene like before the polar bear, when they land on the North Pole, that set was awful. <laughs> set was you awful. could see the back wall. Yeah, yeah. You, you could see the back wall, of the sound stage, and Lee pointed out that like their their landing gear, you it, the, it looked like is attached to the ground. Yeah, like, it, how did, do you... it did not at all look like it was landing gear for their spaceship. It was like it, their spaceship was rooted <laughs> in the ground. And they never left the planet. Like, I can't name that many movies. I can't name any other movies right now that I could I could remember seeing the the sound stage wall. Yeah, it's, yeah, except uh, Brighter Frankenstein or Frankenstein. Like, you can see the wall. But, yeah. It's been a while since I've seen the original Those, those movies, it, it doesn't matter about those movies. Those yeah. were, like, some of the first those movies. Good. But anyway, as 
content goes, it's it's safe for all ages. It's family. It's, it's a family. It's a family film. Christmas movie. I yeah. mean, if I mean, if you want to put your kids in torture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean kids uh, these days they won't they won't watch it. They'll yeah. go. They'll get five minutes into it and be like, "This is horrible. Why are you making us watch it?" I'm what is it? it? This is what Grandma watches. Was was it color? It's, I can't remember. Yeah, it was color. Okay, it was. You you, you just watched it. And you couldn't remember if it was color. No, because the quality was so. Yeah, bad. it's very 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 washed out. Like public domain movies. I so there needs to be a company that that restores public domain movies because I mean yeah. it belongs to nobody. So why not? And people want to see them because I mean public domain movies get a lot of they get a lot of bad releases. Like there's a lot of DVDs of public domain films that are just terrible prints, and I'm tired of seeing that. There needs to be a reputable company that restores them and releases them, even with some bonus features if they can if they can gather up some stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, if someone's listening that has the money to do that, please do because I'd like I'd like to see this movie restored. So I really would, even though it's bad. Still classic. Yeah. So, like Plan well, Nine from kind Outer of a Space. <laughs> like Plan Nine from Outer Space. That's also one of the worst movies ever. Have you seen it? No. Ooh, ooh it's an but, Ed Wood movie. But like this movie, this movie, my my grandfather who was huge in the movies, he um he had the he had the nine millimeter. Oh, he did projectors and stuff. Yeah, he collected the old film reels and stuff. And this was one of the movies he had. And he, every time we went over, he would play Frosty the Snowman and Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. Only I saw Santa Claus Conquers the Martians once. But oh, was it, it was his copy? Well, I don't, I don't can't remember, actually. Cause if it was... But I'd, he does have the copy. I, I do if, remember that. if it was, I'd, I'd wonder if if his has better quality than what we watched. <laughs> it, it probably does. Because the one we watched was off the Internet Archive. Yeah, that always degrades it the quality is so bad yeah but but i'd like to see it restored so somebody with money go go restore a bunch of public domain movies like like the original night of the living dead is public domain and it it, it needs restoration and that's a classic right there yeah a classic in the good rights yeah. and all the good stuff right but yeah content is it's, it's safe for all ages yeah go ahead and watch it if you want yeah, if you but if you want only if you, if you really that. want to, only if you really really want to, <laughs> or if you need, or something. if your friends peer pressure and you into it, <laughs> we <laughs> really didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> or if you need something to fall asleep to, there just there you go. Yeah. So um, quality. Let's see. Internet Movie Database gave gave it a two point five out of and ten. What did you give it out of ten? I gave it a four out of ten, and here's why. What? I gave it a one. I gave it a four out of ten because. Okay, you know, I'm giving it 3 out of 10. But, okay, so 3 out of 10. Here's why. <laughs> um, it's always, it's, yes, it's bad. Yes, it's a horribly made movie. But I still find it entertaining because of all the horribleness. Mm-hmm. It's like Sharknado. I'm not going to, I'm not going to rate Sharknado 2. I'm going to rate it 5. So, you know you'd I mean? give Sharknado a 5 just because you enjoy it. Yeah, if you're, I, not, you're not going to give Starman a 10 because it's not The Godfather. I see how it is. <laughs> I see how it is. I see how your standards are all okay, over the place. I gave it a 3, okay? I gave it a 3, okay? It was, it, it's always had a special place in my heart, except for Voldar, which was... that He's just weird. And plus, Santa's laugh. Yeah. I, I, added, I, add, I added a star for Santa's laugh. I can't get over that laugh. I gave it a one just because it's it's awful. You gave it a one. I, I would give it maybe like a one and a half or okay. a two. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna bump it down to a two because I really do feel it, like it's, I. Oh my goodness! I don't. I don't think I ever want to watch that again. Yeah. Ever. But like, even if I even if I enjoy a really bad movie like The Room, I gave The Room a one. Yet I I I'd watch it over and over again because just it's so entertainingly bad. I, yeah. I, I okay. So I put a two out of ten. I I guess this is very fitting. Because I, I would say if it was horrible and I never want to watch it again, that's a one. Mm. If it's horrible and I want to watch it over and over again, that's a two. Yeah. I guess. I guess that's my philosophy on that. But you got a weird philosophy going on. Hey, whatever. The I star can, man. I do what I want. I do what I want. But anyway, yeah. So that is that. So yeah, that's Santa Claus oh, conquers I've, the Martians. I found I found the actor that played the polar bear. You want to know what his name was? Yes. His name was Gene Lindsay. And he was 29 when he did this one. But he died at the age of 51. Oh. He was also in All the President's Men. 
Rest in peace. The doctors. I always forgot your name. Cotton comes to Harlem. Gene Lindsay. Gene Lindsay. Um, moment of silence for Gene Lindsay. That's long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Got like one and a half Man, what, seconds. Maybe he has family listening, you jerk. That was all Lee. That was all... I'm, I'm sorry, I just... Lee this, this hates movie. this movie with passion. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, you know what? If you want a good laugh, and but for the reason of that, it's horrible. If you if you want to laugh at its horribleness, I I would recommend watching the movie just to laugh at it. But you know what? That's your call. So yeah. So yeah. Well, well yeah. I don't, I don't know what we're talking about next time, but I know it's anyway. Christmas. So we, Christmas we a, day. We have, we have a little song to sing. Oh, yeah. I don't. I need to pull up the lyrics. You need to pull up the lyrics. Wait, okay, one sec. Lyrics. Because I forgot it. Are you gonna sing with us, Lee? Or are you gonna be Grinch? I, I think I'm gonna Grinch this one. <laughs> I, he's I, Grinching. This, this he's Grinching out is, on us. Oh my goodness. Okay, so can you find the lyrics? S A N. Wait. S A N T A C L A U S R A for Santa Claus. I'm gonna start from the part I know. Okay, you start it. Hang up that mistletoe. Soon you'll hear ho ho ho. On Christmas Day you'll wake up and you'll say hooray for Santa Claus. Yeah. Yeah, S A N T A C L A U S R A for Santa Claus. Spell it S A N T A C L A U S R A for Santa Claus. Break it down. You spell it S A N T A C L A U S R A for Santa Claus. So everybody. Everybody, <laughs> everybody. It's on. It's just an Okay. I nearly died. Okay. I almost choked on my gum. Oh my okay. God. <laughs> oh my gosh. Everybody, <laughs> I wish you could have seen this. I nearly died and Lee was like laughing at me. So okay, I'm going to put it okay. back in my mouth. Okay, everybody. <laughs> but, until next time, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs>